Welcome to the lesson on 13.1, Exponential Growth Function. Main question is, how is the graph of g of x, a times b raised to the power of x minus h plus 7, where b is greater than 1, related to the graph of f of x equal to b of x? So we're going to start by graphing, analyzing f of x equal to 2 to the x, and f of x equal to 10 to the x. But before we start that, um, what is exponential function? It's uh, the function, f it's in the form of f of x equal to b to the x, right? And b is a positive constant other than 1. It can't be 1. And it also should say it cannot be 0, uh, but we'll address that later. And x is an exponent. So let's take a look at this. So let's complete the table and what would you get? I'll pause a little bit. If you got these values, then you're on the right track. Why is this true, this one? Because that would mean that we have 2 to the negative 3. And as we remember from the previous section, that negative exponents, uh, you need to move the fraction to the other side. It will put, so what's in the numerator because of the denominator? Hence, it's 1 eighth. OK, let's graph this, shall we? Uh, on your graph, please. Uh, plot these points. So you got negative 3 and 1 eighth, negative 2 and 1 fourth, all the way to 3 eight. When you do that, that's the shape that we get. Uh, the two in green are the two points that we need to use as a reference point at all times. Okay. I did the what's in blue is the extra that I did to help me draw a curve. So now let's connect the points. And that's what that looks like. To zero over here. The value over here somehow doesn't seem to touch that. If you keep going, uh, to, if you go to the left, uh, it looks like we're going by half as, half the amount, half of the y value. And then if that's 1 eighth, that's 1 16th, and half of that is 1 over 32. If you continuously go to the left, it's approaching zero, but it doesn't touch it. Because it, it will never touch the x-axis, that right there is called asymptote. And equation of the asymptote is y equal to 0. Okay. Now that we have talked about that, what is the domain and the range of the function? Well, as you can see visually that the domain is all real numbers and y must be greater than 0. y intercept is equal to 1. Because when you plug in for 0 for x, uh, we get 1. So you can see that right there, 0, 1. But be careful. I've noticed that in the past, some of you guys gave me the answer is 0, 1. 0, 1 is technically wrong because x intercept, by definition, is a value, not a coordinate. So your answer has to be 1, not 0, 1. And the function is increasing. Uh, as you see, you can tell by as x goes from left to right, my y value is going up, hence it is increasing. All right, we go, we'll come to the transformation of the exponential function. And for this chapter, we're assuming that b is greater than 1. And when you have a transformation function, g of x, um, where you got the uh, constants a, h, and a k, how does that relate to f of x equal to b to the x? If you're saying this looks very familiar, it should be. Uh, the role of the A, H, K has not changed. So A is a vertical stretch or compression depending on the value, and H is a horizontal translation, and K is the vertical translation. So the two of the more common ones that we'll be using is 2 to the X and 10 to the X. Um, so when you, we already did 2 to the X, but the two things that we'll be doing mostly is the when x equals to 0, and when you go move to 1 to the right, 2 to the 1 is 2. So that's 1, 2 right there, right? And we just kind of know the shape of the exponential function, so we're going to draw that along. And the other important thing over here is uh, the asymptote, y equal to 0. And if you do the same thing with 10 to the x, 10 to the 0 is 1, and 10 to the 1 is 10. So we tend to use when x equals to 0 and 1, we plot those two points as our guide. And in both cases, uh, 
horizontal asymptote is equal to zero. So we'll be using this information, guys. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, let's do this example. What do you notice right away? First of all, A is negative, so it reflects over x axis. And absolute value of A is 2, so it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And what's my HK, guys? It's 3, 3. Right. So it means that there's a horizontal translation to the right by 3, vertical trans translation up by 3. And then the domain, as you could tell, in this particular case is all real numbers, but range is y is less than 3. Can you guess why it's less than 3, but not greater than 3? If you mention that it's because the a value is negative, then you're absolutely correct. Okay, guys, let's, uh, instead of making a table, let's do the transformation, okay? Let's start with y is equal to to the x, which is the uh, vertical, uh, so, which is a parent function, by the way. And then let's do the uh, reflection over x-axis. Then the, instead of this being 1, it should be negative 1. Instead of this being 2, uh, it should be negative 2. So it'd be 1, negative 2, right? There you go. Perfect. Now, the second thing we do here is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So when you do that, th this y-intercept of negative 1 should become negative 2. 1, negative 2 should be 1, negative 4. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, let's break this one down. So horizontal shift by 3. So this point should go 1, 2, 3. And this point goes, should go to the right by 1, 2, 3. You should do both of them. And those are the points that we have. So when you're doing this, guys, you don't actually have to draw as you go. You could just uh, transform those two points. Okay. All right. The next thing we need to do is a vertical transition by three. So this point should come up to here. And this here is one, two, three. Right there, guys. Okay. There you go. Okay. That graph didn't line up a little bit. My apologies. And then you could sort of tell that right there, HK is 3, and my asymptote is at 3, right? Okay. So you could visually tell that because we reflected, my range has to be less than 3. All right, there are more questions to follow, but let's do that in class. I think this is enough of a reminder from what we did in the past and a little bit of a new thing. And I think the remaining material should be done in class. Okay? Have a good night.